Hey there Pixelators, this is Joshua and in this video, what we're going to talk about is the carousel. So please don't forget to click that subscribe button as well as to hit that like. Without further ado, let's begin. So in our previous video, what we dealt with was floating action button. So what you have here is a floating action button. What the floating action button does is basically it creates a, uh, in a sense, a button that floats on your screen basically and then shows you some sub options. In this case, you have the home, you have a mail, and then you have the options itself. So if you click a floating action button, it typically creates or it typically uses a important function. So in our case, in our previous example, what we talked about was the contacts list. So if you click a contacts list, if you click the add button on the contacts list, it adds a contact, right? So in our floating actions button example here, you have home as well as the mail. What we're going to talk about in this video is the carousel. Now. In the carousel, what you have is it is a component that displays information inside a specific content. What do I mean by that? Imagine that you have a window and then inside that window, you have several contents sliding inside of it. So that's what the carousel basically does. Think of it as a slideshow in other terms. But in Quasar's definition, it is basically an image gallery. So how do we implement such feature? As you can see, you simply need to create a carousel element and then you add a carousel slide element to it. So in order to implement that on our side, we simply need to create a div and then we need to add some style to it. Let's say with, let's set it to 400 pixels for now. And then next, what we're going to do is we're going to set a class. Let's say, let's add some padding to it like that. Just a simple padding. And then next, what we're going to do is we're going to create the carousel itself, like this one. And then we're going to set a V model to, let's say, carousel. So in our case, we set a V model named carousel, which is a data variable bound below here. So you can see it is, or rather here, it's currently set to home. Now you may ask, why home? We're going to use that later on in declaring our slides. So. Now that we have a Q carousel like this one, and then, or rather like that one, what we're going to do next is we're going to create Q carousel slides. So this one, let's set it to home, like this one. And then let's set a simple content. Let's say class. Let's set it to, let's say text H2. H2 should be enough. And then let's set it to home. And then we simply duplicate it many times over. So let's set this one to mail. And then let's set the text as well. Say mail. Let's set this one to profile. Set this one to profile. And then we click settings. And then set this one to settings. Then now that we have our slides, what we're going to need is to change our content. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a button toggle to it as you can see over here. So we simply grab this one and put it here. Then we readjust it a bit. And then we're going to explain what this means basically. So now that we have a V model here, what this means is that our button toggle has four options, which is the style, TV, layers, and map. So in our case, we simply rename them to our own values. We grab this one, set it here, and then we grab the settings and put it here. Now that we have our own carousel slides here, what we're going to do next is we're going to display it over here. As you can see, if you click this one, the slide changes. So this, as you can see over here is, or rather this content right here is our carousel itself. So in order to make it more visible, we can add specific classes to it. So let's say, let's make it a bit more visible. So let's add some, uh, let's say rounded borders. Yeah, we can do that. So we need to simply add a rounded borders over here, like this one. What it's going to set, it's it's going to have rounded borders. Now to make it more visible, let's add a, uh, what do you call that? What do you call that? Let's see. Ah, yes. Now, so what we're going to add is, in order to make it visible, we're going to add some background to it. So in our case, let's set it to primary, like this one. 
and then let's going to set we're going to set this to text white in order to make the text color white in short making it more visible like that now we have so now that we have our own slide here what we're going to do next is we're going to format our content a little bit so let's move it to the middle so in order to do that we simply add these specific classes like this one this one this one Oh, wrong. Over here, over here, we remove this one, and then we set it to this one. Now, what's going to happen is it's going to center our content right here, as you can clearly see. But you may notice also that there's nothing much going on aside from changing content, right? So we can fix that by simply adding an animated property over here. If you click that, there's an animation happening right here. So by default, the animation is like this one. So as you can clearly see, it is animating on its own, right? So aside from those, you can also have custom transitions. So if you can see right here, you simply add a specific transition based on what you would like it to happen. So you simply add a transition over here. So we grab this one, we set it like this, and then we set it to this one in order to make it more visible and readable. So after we add that transition right there, what you're going to have is a custom transition. Earlier, what we had was the fading thing, right? Now we have the scaling thing, which is this one, as you can see. If you click this one, if you click these buttons right here, they change as well. So next, what we're going to have is the vertical itself. Vertical itself is simply a way of telling Quasar that the button should be vertically aligned. So we simply add a vertical property here. And then you'll notice, so we simply add the vertical. We add the navigation itself, some padding and the arrows itself, meaning we add the controls of the carousel and now you have this one as you can see right here you will notice that they all change based on what i click meaning they all share the same v model so it's useful when you want to trigger your carousel in a different manner aside from the controls themselves so aside from that you also have the control type what it means is basically it changes the way the control buttons are laid out. So you can set it using the, uh, what do you call this? The specific property, which is, what do you call, ah, yes, the control type, yes. So you use the control type, this one, oh, no, not this one, the control type, and then you set it to outline. For example, what we're going to have is our buttons, which are outlined right here, as you can clearly see. So now we have buttons that are outlined. So that is one example of the control type. Next, you have a navigation position. So navigation position is basically telling Quasar where the buttons are located, as you can see right here. So in order to implement that, you simply need the navigation position property right here. So you add the navigation position. Let's say it's top. And then what that does is it's moving the navigation top over here or rather it moves the navigation to the top level right here but you will notice that the buttons overlap which is as you can clearly see around here so in order to prevent that you simply remove the vertical property like this one and then it goes back to normal like this so aside from that you also have a custom navigation so in this custom navigation what they did is basically a custom icon so you will notice that they created a v slot over here which uses the navigation icon slot and then they added some simple v if statements which tells if the button is active or not so basically if the button is active they display the home icon as well as the yellow color but if it is not active they use the white color and then they use the default icon which is the circle thing as you can see here 
Aside from those, you also have the auto padding. So what does auto padding do? Auto padding is basically a feature of the carousel which adds a padding automatically in between your content, as you can see right here. You can choose the padding as well where you want it to be. You can have a padding at the bottom, you can have it on the right. Oh, I apologize. This is the navigation position, right? So you can move the navigation buttons based on where you want it to. You can see the clear difference if you turn the padding on and off right here. So if, if you add the padding by default, you will have a content within this specific border right here. But if you turn it off, it contains the entire, or rather it consumes the entire slide itself. So that's what padding does. It basically automates your padding. Next is you have a media content. So what media content basically means is your carousel slide contains images or not just images, but rather media. In this case, you can see that they bound the image directly to the carousel slide. And then they added these properties, which allows the navigation basically. So if you click this or this, what do you call this? If you click these navigation buttons, you will see that they have their own images, right? So that's what media content basically does. Aside from those, you have also multiple image slides. What it does is you can create as many images as you want inside a carousel slide. You can implement, let's say, maybe two, maybe three, maybe five, or as many as you want. In this case, what they did was they created two examples. Aside from those, you also have captions. So you have an image here and you want, let's say, to add a caption. You simply add a carousel slide and then you add a div inside that carousel slide and then you add your textual content right here as you can see what it what it does it is because of the absolute bottom class your div is located in the bottom and then you add some custom caption to it to create your own or let's say custom classes or whatever and then you have these two divs right here which is the text themselves or with that little trick you will end up with a caption style content like this one Aside from those, you also have video slides. What it means is that in your carousel, you can embed video links. So in your carousel, you can have YouTube embed videos right then and there. So as you can see, you have video here, a video here, and then another video here. So you can have multiple videos inside your carousel. You can add as many as you want, and you can embed them based on what you want to as well. So aside from that example, you also have thumbnails. So thumbnails is basically a short preview of the content that you put inside a Q carousel slide. So in this case, you have images. So the images themselves are pointed to the thumbnails themselves. That's what it does basically. So in order to implement that, you simply add a thumbnails property to it. And then you use that one to attach the thumbnails in the slides themselves. Aside from those, you also have the infinite and then the autoplay. So what infinite and autoplay does is it basically allows your slide to play infinitely. So you simply add an infinite and then you add an autoplay to this one. So if you do that, our component, which is here, automatically changes its slide based on a set interval. And then once it reaches the last part of the slide, what it does is after a set interval, it moves back to the first one. There you go. Meaning you have an infinite loop of changing slides, or rather you have a slide which changes a lot, or rather it changes based on a set interval, meaning you have a sliding feature, making it a full-fledged slider. So aside from those, you can also customize your controls, which is these buttons right here. You have the autoplay and then you have this Two buttons right here so by default you will notice that this is not what's this is not quasars buttons themselves or rather this is a custom button as well as this autoplay as you can clearly see right here so aside from customizing the controls themselves you can also add a q scroll area within your slides so as you can see the slide itself is scrollable in this example below, the entire container is scrollable. If I change content, it is still scrollable. Same as with this one. If I change content, it is still scrollable. Lastly, we have full screen. So 
What full screen does is it allows your slides, it allows you to occupy the entire screen without any hindrance whatsoever. So if you click on the full screen button, as you can see, the entire content is, or the entire space is taken up by the carousel itself. And then if I click this again, it goes back to normal. So that is what the full screen feature does. So with all of these features displayed in a carousel, you can create your own version of the carousel, which is the most commonly used item in a website. And then you can roll out your own customizations as well. So you can go crazy and you can go ham with it or you can unleash your creativity in a carousel component aside from displaying images. So if you see that this video has been useful for you, please don't hesitate to leave a like as well as to click that subscribe button to get notified of our latest updates as well as when new tutorial videos get uploaded. Again, this is Joshua Haji from Pixelate. See you later, Pixelators!